Ladies and scrubs, we have a bunch of hobby hot takes to get through today, but before we do that, I do want to take a moment and recognize the pain and suffering in the Zion Williamson investor circles throughout the hobby. I do realize that there are thousands of Zion Williamson cards sitting in Pelican cases across the country losing value by the day. So I do know the hurt and loss you're feeling and we wish you all the best over here at Sports Card Radio. But we're not gonna let that get us down today. We've got a bunch of hobby hot takes to get through. I found all of these on the internet. Let's see what we got. At Price Card says, my hobby hot take for the night. This card will record the highest sale in hobby history within the next 10 to 15 years. Yes, even more than the 1952 Topps Mickey Mantle in PSA 10 condition. Okay, this is certainly a hot take. I disagree with this one. Even if the Otani card 10X is in value, 20X is in value, 100X is in value, in my opinion, it would also raise the value of other baseball cards, especially something like the 1952 Topps Mickey Mantle. In my opinion, the 1952 Topps Mickey Mantle is one of four cards that transcends the hobby itself. The T206 Hannes Wagner, the 52 Mantle, the 1986 Fleer, Fleer! Michael Jordan, and the 1989 Upper Deck King Griffith Jr. rookie card, which we will talk about later, are the four cards, in my opinion, that transcend the hobby. And even people who have never been serious about cards or even sports may recognize what those cards are. Therefore, if a card like this Otani goes up in value, even a lot, so would the 1952 Mickey Mantle, in my opinion. As good as Otani is, he's not, at least in America, even close to as culturally relevant as Mickey Mantle was back in his day. More people care about Zion and Ja in America than Otani. That's just the reality of the situation. Uh, a lot of other you know, YouTube channels and podcasts, they will attack me and they will say, Jeff is not a collector. He's just in it for the money. That's the number one criticism that gets slung out around me. Jeff is not a collector. He's just in it for the money. Well, let me say a couple things about Next that. hot take at Haas von Sliegel. The next two year lead up to the 2026 World Cup will make soccer cards the hottest item in the hobby. NFL cards are going to nosedive over the next 18 months. I don't agree that NFL cards will nosedive. I think the popularity of the NFL will prevent football cards from nosediving. They could go down in value, but I don't see them nosediving in value over 18 months. The soccer hot take, I am trying to buy some Mbappe cards. I don't actually don't totally disagree with this. The hottest item in the hobby, I mean, we'll see. It'll be whatever hot rookie probably in basketball or football that you guys will be chasing. Even though the modern card market is a little soft, I think it's a great value right now on Trey, especially with the playoffs approaching. I am a buy on Trey Young. Always Learn 24-7 comes in with consolidation and sports cards will lead to government regulation. There's been a lot of talk about regulation lately within sports cards, but I've only ever heard it from the industry side of things. I've never heard a politician or a lawmaker actually comment on regulating sports cards or even Pokemon cards or Magic the Gathering cards. Would the regulation happen at the federal level no, no. or the state level? It would suck if each individual state had their own laws about how cards could be distributed and sold, for example. So government regulation should be the last thing anybody would want in this hobby except for maybe content creators because it would be a fun story to cover if legislation, even in an individual state, was enacted. I would buy Ja Morant cards. Next hobby hot take, spending more money on cards of guys that have never played a game in the majors than you can buy autographs and rookies of Hall of Famers is insane. Look, there are many ways to comp cards. The way I comp the Kobe Bryant autographs I've been buying is look at what people pay for Ja and Zion autographs. And I feel pretty good about anything I've bought. I'll just say that. If I could choose only one to invest in based upon the value of their cards 
compared to what their career looks like this season and in the next few seasons, one player jumped off the paper compared to everybody else when I ran them through the statistical formula. And that was Tyler Hero. Tyler Hero ranked way above. At Frank All the Ridge says the 1989 Upper Deck King Griffey Jr. rookie cards are overvalued. With over 120,000 graded, there is a lot out there. Maybe I'm just sore that I don't have one. I disagree with this. I think they actually might be undervalued. It doesn't matter to me how many of them there are. Griffey lived up to the hype of being a good player and had a great career. And it's one of the four cards even people who don't know anything about sports cards may actually recognize. The T206 Hanus Wagner, the 52 Mandel, the 86 Fleer Michael Jordan, the 89 King Griffey Jr. rookie card. Because of that, I think this card might actually be undervalued if you zoom out a few years. His cards have been the hottest in the sports card hobby. So today on Sports Card Investor, I'm sharing with you my awesome Trey Young collection. At Sick Idea says Devante Smith is a major buy low right now. Smith is a wide receiver for the Philadelphia Eagles. I actually think all football cards that aren't quarterbacks could be undervalued in my opinion. D Nick 55 says non-sport cards are going to be a better long-term investment. Then sports cards, I have an unopened box of Pearl Jam trading cards that I'm sitting on, so I actually 100% agree with this. You know, I've never been the type to really care about that kind of thing. And, and At Dave says, Lorcana is going to be huge. Dave, I know one person that would agree with you 100%, and it's hobby hero Jeff Wilson. I think that Will Greer right now is about four times better of an investment than Kyler Murray. At JP says the hobby peaked with upper deck Ionics. I can say that I worked in a hobby shop when this set came out. It wasn't the most popular of upper deck sets at the time. It, it was more of a niche following even back then, but to each their own on card design. Prime time SC2 comes in. There is no player in a current hobby product that is a long-term hold. Hey, there's some variables here. What, what is the current hobby product? Is it the current year? Is it five years old? Is it 10 years old? Some people in the comments made some good points. Perhaps Otani is a long-term hold. Perhaps Patrick Mahomes is a long-term hold. I was bidding on some of his autographs the other night. Perhaps Mbappe, the soccer player is a long-term hold. What if he becomes an all-time great like Pele, like Messi, like Ronaldo? Perhaps Mbappe gets his face up there on the Mount Rushmore of soccer, and that could certainly make his cards a long-term hold. What are some of your hobby hot takes? I want to hear from you. Got any hobby hot takes? Leave them in the comments. I'm sure other people will enjoy reading them and maybe even responding to you. And maybe we'll do another video here soon on Sports Card Radio and go over them and go over the hot takes in the hobby. But hopefully all of your cards stay hot and we will see you very soon right here on Sports Card Radio. Yep. Yep.